Welcome to our lecture online. On this particular problem from the JEE advanced test, there's one of the answers when I read it, I wasn't quite sure what they were asking. And of course, that's the trouble of the students taking the test. They don't always understand what the author of the problem is trying to ask. So let's read the problem and see why I have this doubt. It deals with an RC circuit and a switch. Notice that we start out with the circuit with the switch from A to B, and then the switch gets changed from A to D. So let's read the problem to see what happens. At time t equals zero, terminal A in the circuit shown is connected to B by a key and an alternating current I equals I sub naught times the cosine of omega t, with I sub naught equal one amp, and omega being 500 radians per second. So the current starts flowing in it with an initial direction shown in the figure. So there's an initial current as indicated by the equation going in this direction at time equals zero. That's when the switch goes from A to B. And that means that the capacitor will be begin to be charged by this varying uh, supply, voltage supply. So then when the time reaches seven pi over six omega, the key is switched from B to D. So we go from this position to that position at that moment in time. And notice T equals 7 pi over 6 W seems kind of an odd time indicator, but that's what it is. So the key is switched from B to D. From now on, only A and D are connected. So from then on, we stay in this position with a voltage source of 50 volts, a DC voltage source that eventually will charge the capacitor with its maximum capacitance. And then uh, let's see here. Uh, a total charge Q flows from the battery to charge the capacitor fully. If C equals 20 microfarads and R equals 10 ohms and the battery is ideal, meaning it doesn't have any internal resistance with an EMF of 50 volts, identify the correct statements and here are the four statements and any one of those four could be correct. Hmm. So, how do we do this? Well, first of all, in order to understand what's going on, we have an alternating voltage source. I think it's a good idea to draw a quick picture of what is happening. So first, let's draw the current. It's, it has a cosine function, so the cosine when t equals zero is one. So the current will look like this. It'll be an oscillating current like this. And notice that pi over two, uh, no, this is uh, yeah, pi over two, pi, three pi's over two, and two pi. So this would be the two pi spot. So this is 2 pi, uh, right here, this is pi, like that. This is pi over 2, right here. And then if we're going to draw the, uh, the uh, voltage, the voltage, of course, lags in a capacitor circuit. So the voltage goes like this, like that, and then it comes down to this, and then it goes down here to this, and then it comes back up to there, and it goes back up to like this. So this is the voltage across capacitor, and this is the current function. All right, so what does this time indicate? So let's go ahead and plug that into the equation. We have I as a function of time is equal to I sub naught times the cosine of omega t. So I when t is equal to 7 pi over 6 omega is equal to I sub naught. Now remember, I sub naught is simply 1 amp, so we can kind of get rid of that, times the cosine of omega times 7 pi over 6 omega. Notice that the omegas cancel out, and we're at 6, 7 pi. So where is that on our graph? So 6, 7 pi is, um, hmm, that's 120 degrees, 6 over 7, no, 7 over 6 pi. That's a 210 degrees, 210 degrees. So that means we're here, that is pi. 7 pi would put us right about here, which would mean that in magnitude, because the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half, right? So that's 180 degrees plus 30 degrees, and the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half, which means we're back at the halfway point from here to here. We're back at the halfway point, wherever that happens to be. So just kind of go like this, and that would be at the uh, pi, uh, 7 pi over 6 position in time. 
Okay, on at least not in time, but on this graph right there. Okay, can we answer the questions? The magnitude of the maximum charge on C before T equals 7 pi over 6 omega is 1 times 10 to the minus 3. So, hmm, hmm, how do we figure that out? Well, let's go to this equation right here. So for part A, let's say that I is equal to dq dt, dq dt, which means that uh, dq is equal to I times dt, and I, of course, is 1 times the cosine of omega t. So this is equal to 1 times the cosine of omega t times dt. And notice if we're going to integrate that, that means that q is equal to the integral of dq, which is equal to the integral of this, so the integral of the cosine of omega t times dt, but if we're going to integrate the cosine of omega t, we need an omega dt here, so we need, let me use the red, we need an omega times dt, otherwise we can't integrate it, and then of course, to compensate for that, we need a 1 over omega over here, like that. So now we can integrate the cosine of omega t, and I'll put brackets around like this, times omega dt, we can integrate that, so we have q is equal to 1 over omega, times the integral of the cosine is the sine of omega t, and we're going to integrate that from, uh, let's say from 0 to pi. Um, from 0, oh, what I want to do here is notice that the current becomes negative past the pi over 2 position, so that means the capacitor will begin to discharge as the current begins to change direction. When we're here, the current is going opposite direction, so we want to know the full charge on the capacitor when we go from here to there. So the full charge can be found by using the limits of pi over 2. When plug in the upper limit, when t is uh, pi over 2, the sine of the maximum value, pi over 2 times omega, that would then equal 1. When we plug in the 0, we get 0. So this simply becomes 1 over omega, which is equal to 1 over 500. That would be in terms of coulombs, which is equal to 2 millicoulomb. So the maximum charge that we load onto the capacitor is 2 millicoulomb, and now we can answer part A, say the magnitude of the maximum charge on C before t equals 7 pi over 6 omega, which is, before, which is after we get to this point right here. This is where we get the maximum charge on the capacitor. It'll be 2 millicoulombs. They say it's 1 millicoulomb, so that means that A is not a correct statement. All right, a lot of work to get just part A. Part B, the current in the left part of the circuit just before we make the switch change is clockwise. So clockwise would be like this. But we already know that it starts out clockwise until we reach this point in time and then the current begins to reverse. And so before we get to this point right here, the current is still going in the negative direction until we reach this point. So that means it's going counterclockwise at that moment. And so that means B is also incorrect. Next, immediately after A is connected to D, so as soon as we change position to there, the current in R equals 10 amps. Now, the danger here is to not assume there's any charge on the capacitor, and we simply use Ohm's law. We go I equals V over R, and 50 volts of at about 10 ohms is, is uh, 5 amps, so we would say that C is wrong. But that's not entirely true. It may be true, but think again. At the time that we switch, notice the charge on the capacitor is halfway to its maximum value. That's because we are at an angle of 210 degrees. The cosine of 30 degrees is one half. So at that point, we're at the halfway point. So we know that the charge on the capacitor is equal to one micro coulomb. So at this moment we go from here to this position right here. At that moment the charge Q is equal to half its maximum charge which is one millicoulomb. I said micro, I meant millicoulomb. 
So what is the voltage across the capacitor? Well, we know that capacitance is equal to Q over V, or V is equal to Q over C, and so it's equal to 1 millicoulomb divided by 20 microfarads, which is 50 volts, which means there's 50 volts, and which direction is it? Well, since we're reversing direction, we have positive charge on this side, and we have negative charge on this side, and we have a potential difference of 50 volts across the capacitor in the same direction as the volt across the battery. So the total voltage at that moment in time when we flip the switch, the total voltage in the circuit is 100 volts. And so then if we use Ohm's law, we can say that I is equal to V total over R. In this case, it would be 50 volts on the battery plus 50 volts on the capacitor divided by 10 ohms. So you can see that's 100 divided by 10 or 10 amps. And it turns out at that very moment when we flip the switch, the current indeed is 10 amps, which means C is correct. And that's one of the answers. I said one of the answers because I know that D is also correct, but I'm not quite sure what they're asking on that particular answer. They said Q is equal to 2 times 10 to the minus 3. Does that mean that's, of course, 2 millicoulombs? Does that mean that the maximum charge is equal to 2 millicoulombs? Is that correct? Is it the maximum charge immediately after A is connected to D? Which we know is not true because immediately after, there's only 1 millicoulomb there. So Q, may, I think it's related to the fact that the maximum charge collected on the capacitor is indeed 2 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs. And so based upon this discovery, I would say this is also correct. But I just would be guessing because I'm not sure that that's what they're asking. They're not clear. They should have put a few words in there and saying this is what we're meaning by that particular question. It turns out when I looked at the answer key that this is indeed a correct answer, but I'm not sure why it is. It wasn't made clear. I think it was a disappointment that it wasn't made clear. And the reason I think it's correct is because we did calculate the total charge at the maximum for the capacitor is indeed 2 millicoulombs. But I'm not sure that's the answer. And that is the way it goes when you take the JE advanced test. You don't always know what the author of the question was asking or what the author was thinking. You can't read minds. Wish you could. No, maybe we better not. And that's, at least, that's the way I look at the answer, and I think that's why it's correct. Three minutes, huh? Three minutes for this question. Yes, how about that? <laughs> Hopefully you did the previous one a little bit faster. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa.